So let's bring uh, Muhammad Kubari, the former Yemeni ambassador to Lebanon and Cyprus, uh, into the discussion as well. Many thanks for being with us. Um, I want to ask you this. Uh, the president has shown clearly that he is not going to step down uh, uh, anytime soon. Uh, are we looking at more bloodshed uh, in, in Yemen? And if in the event of that happening, are we going to see any serious uh, international action against them? Actually, uh, I think the man is aiming at that. He is trying to, as I said, to push the country into more turmoil. He would like to see more bloodshed so that the chaos which, which will, uh, you know, sort of happen uh, could give him a chance. And that's his only, the way he thinks, the man, he thinks that the only way for him, the guarantees, the only guarantees for him is to turn the country into anarchy and disintegration. But I think the credibility, his credibility has been locked completely for a long time ago. He has no credibility with his people, with the politicians in the country. The question is now the credibility of our brothers in the GCC. Today, I think uh, it was quite uh, good to hear from them, uh, from them reprimanding him because of his stance and the bad words he said about Qatar. Qatar has been playing a very important role as regards most of the uh, events happening in Yemen in the past uh, four or five years. They have helped a lot in stopping the war in Fada with the Houthis, and now they are you know, achieving a lot of success with the, with the way they have, to, with their views and, and interventions. Uh, the president for the past two, three days has, has you know, went into a new tactic of by trying to divide the GCC and hitting at Qatar. And uh, the, the people in Yemen and I myself felt quite uh, good that the, the, the GCC uh, council have reprimanded him and said you cannot go on continuing sort of uh, telling all these uh, you know, bad words about the, the, uh, you know, the, the, the efforts which is being uh, played by Qatar. But I think they have got to go further ahead. If they start, you know, hitting him by saying that we're going to freeze your account, uh, if, if, if one of them, if Bahrain only or stops or freezes his account, or Dubai freezes part of the account, I think the man will come into his senses and then he will he'll move forward. Because this is now something which is, which is I mean, uh, it's quite humiliating the way he has treated them. Uh, he, he's a very low man, you know. He, he said, yes, I will sign, and then the com when he comes to sign, well, I, I'm not going to sign as a president, I'm going to sign as the chairman of the ruling party. What sort of games are these? This is kiddish games. I mean, they have got to stop him. And furthermore, I think the credibility of the West now is also online because the, the bloodshed which is happening now in Aden, yesterday six of our brothers in Aden have been killed. And it, the man uh, went with, with tanks into uh, one of the squares of Aden and started, you know, uh, hitting uh, uh, on, in mass uh, all over, the, over the protesters. Could the world, you know, sort of just stay looking at such, such actions? I think the public opinion in the West have got to show uh, some sort of sensitivity towards such actions. Nobody would accept them. There is double standards happening here with the way the, the, the West and the public opinion in the West is treating the, the events in Yemen. We hear, you know, different reactions to the same sort of events happening in other places. Why does it happen with Yemen? I think they're going to lose their face completely in the streets of Yemen. And today, the, the protesters actually have come out in Aden, in Dais, and now in Sana'a against the GCC countries. It's something which we, as politicians, we don't want to see. It. Uh, the way uh, things should go forward, I think, is for these people to tell the man enough is enough, and you push and push him out. And also, this now. 30 days, uh, you know, interval by, between the, the, the signing the, or the, the, the uh, agreement and then relinquishing his power, I think that is too long for such a man who has no any, uh, you know, credibility, he is untrustworthy, uh, and he has got to move out as soon as possible or will end up in bloodshed in Yemen, and the people uh, of Yemen will hold the, our brothers in the area, in the region, quiet, they will help them responsible for all such developments, and it doesn't help the future relations of the coming, uh, you know, stay at power in the country with, the, with, the, with, with, with the, its, its uh, neighbors in the area. I think the region has got to stand and it's got to shoulder its responsibility and show more uh, sort of understanding and actually the man has got to be stopped and tell him enough is enough not only as regards Qatar he has actually what he has done he has brought the, the, the I mean he has treated everybody else with a lot of lowness 
And it's not only Qatar, I think he meant the whole of the GCC. He, he has actually rubbed their nose into earth. And I think it's time for them to hit back and to show him that he cannot continue playing those games with them. They have got well, a lot of... Such reaction doesn't seem to be coming from the, the GCC members uh, at this point. Uh, let me put this other question to Peter Russian. Uh, chaos and anarchy, to borrow two uh, words from uh, Ambassador uh, Kubari, is what uh, Salah seems to be planning to lead the country uh, into. But let's talk about the regional implications of, of continued unrest um, in Yemen, as far as uh, stability is concerned in the region. Mm. Well, I, I think this may partly explain the division that is now opening up, potentially between the GCC and uh, Sala, because while chaos and anarchy may be the only card that he has left to play at home, whether to divide the opposition or whether to be able to turn to his long-term sponsors in Washington and say, I am the only man who can control uh, anarchy. So in other words, with one hand uh, encouraging anarchy, if you like, and yet with the other hand saying, I am the only man who can, who can stop the anarchy. Uh, this cannot be got good news, particularly for Saudi Arabia. Further anarchy, further uh, unrest, uh, further, a, a further continuing festering sense of injustice in Yemen is bound to be something that has the potential to spread, particularly as far as Saudi Arabia is concerned. Uh, of course, all of the GCC states, you would have thought, would have an interest in stability in the region, but I think the Saudis have a particular concern about it simply because there's been continuing evidence over the last year or two that the Saudi political system itself is entering a period of extreme crisis, that the Saudi political system itself uh, simply can no longer cope with the stresses and strains within that kingdom, uh, that the uh, system of corruption and oppression that has enabled that system to survive may crumble in the same way that, this, that uh, Salah's uh, network of, of corruption and oppression is crumbling. So were there to be continued unrest on the streets, there's bound to be a fear within Saudi Arabia that this would spread to them, that this in, uh, in, in particular to the Saudis. And uh, from also, the point of view also of Washington, about, uh... this may well prove the main reason why they will want, they should now be wanting to get rid of Salah very quickly indeed. Mm -hmm. But the longer he's there, it's quite clear one way or another, instability will result, possibly at his own instigation, because that very unrest, that very chaos, is the only card that he can play. One way or another, chaos will, will increase the longer Salah remains in power. And that must now be becoming clear, you would have thought, to his long-standing paymasters in Washington. Right. Uh, speaking of Washington, the special relations between the U.S. and, and Yemen's president for life, uh, Washington hasn't been so tough with Salah, uh, despite the crimes that he has committed. Uh, people looking at American-supplied helicopters flying over uh, the cities across the country. How is that going to sit with the people uh, in Yemen, more than two-thirds of whom are under at the age of 24. I want to put the question to both of you gentlemen, but uh, let me start with uh, Peter Rushton and then um, Ambassador Mohammed Kabari. Peter? Yes, indeed. Well, first of all, when we speak of the people of Yemen, let's pause for a moment to remember the extraordinary courage that the people of Yemen have shown, particularly young people with their whole lives ahead of them have shown enormous courage in defying what they know perfectly well to be a particularly brutal dictatorship, in defying a political system that, let's face it, uh, uh, they have never known anything else but Salah in power. In some cases, their parents' generation have never known anything else but Salah in power. He's been there for so long, and yet people have been prepared to defy him. Now, having shown that extraordinary courage, that extraordinary resilience, They've invested a lot of hope in the future. If the United States wishes to be part of the future development, not only of Yemen, but of the whole region, surely 
the U.S. State Department can no longer continue to align itself with the same old policy of backing the same old dictators and the same old brutality. They surely now must be trying to match their words about justice, their fine words about justice and human rights, with actions about justice and human rights. And if they don't do that, then they surely cannot be surprised if they forfeit the confidence of the younger generation, the future generations in Yemen and across the region. It's time for American actions, uh, actual American policies, to match up to American rhetoric. Thanks, so, Peter Russian. Let me give uh, a chance to uh, Ambassador Kubadi as well to address the same question. Ambassador Kubadi. By, by the way, I think the, the, the American position in Yemen is uh, quite under a lot of uh, scrutiny now. I mean, the people know that uh, the special units which has been trained by the, uh, unfortunately, by our friends in the United States and to a certain extent as well by our friends in UK. These special units trained for uh, anti-terrorism are actually now the units which uh, uh, Ali Abdullah Saleh is treating everybody else to, 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 to crush the, the protesters. And, and, this, and our people think that most of the killings which have happened were carried out by these uh, you know, personnel trained and even armed by the United States and, and the European Union. So I think their position is now uh, quite uh, you know, under uh, a lot of questions, especially with them knowing that this man is not only playing those games, I, I, I think our friends now in the West should know that even the pirates uh, who are now uh, working in the, in the Gulf of Aden region has uh, some links with the, with the sons and nephews of uh, President Ali Abdullah Saleh and all their uh, you know games and ploys in in, the, in that in that uh, in those seas. Uh, 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 then, uh, after all, uh, they should know that Ali, Ali Abdullah Saleh is playing with everything in the area. He's, 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 he's not only actually accused, but we know that he's involved in, in the smuggling of arms, smuggling of drugs, um, uh, you know, uh, smuggling of, 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 of even terrorism across the area. So, to which extent can they bear that? Can that continue with all those cards now being exposed? The West is actually under a lot of, you know, uh, pressure now to move forward. I don't think that the Saudis and the GCC countries should be allowed just only to call the shots. I think the West now and the United States especially is has got to come in and show that it, it's, it is carrying its responsibility and it's shouldering it, it, it's uh, a sort of uh, uh, Ex the way the extent human rights and the body, I'm really sorry. Is going I accept on my now. apology, please. The, the we are, are, well, we are out of time. Thank you so much. Uh, former Yemeni ambassador to Lebanon and Cyprus, Mohammed Kabadi in London, as well as uh, historian and political analyst Peter Rushton, also in London.